Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for being here today for Deborah Cobelt Live. I have a wonderful guest in studio with me, Michelle Lang. Thanks so much for being here. I read this cover to cover. I love it. It's terrific. And basically, it's about helping to empower your child on how to swim, but how to swim in sort of a gentle manner, which is not the way that my kids necessarily learned. I remember the teacher would just sort of throw them in. So um, aside from being an author, uh, you were a competitive swimmer. Um, you are currently a Reiki healer, you're a filmmaker, you're an actor, you do a lot. So thanks for being here and taking the time. Um, so a Mermaid's Guide, I wrote it because my husband and I run a, I call it this, the Chanel of swimming lessons. Like it's a really sophisticated, high-end swim business. And mm. we've been running this for years and we, we do it in the summers. And then, then in the winters we go and we make movies, which seems like a bit of an odd No, it seems like a cool life to me. I'm <laughs> like, seriously, are you kidding me? No, we'll swim in the summer, like yeah. make movies in the winter, in go to the winter. film festivals. It's like, okay. Yeah, and okay. that is, is, and it's such a great job because we, we do have control over it. So we will say, hey, we have this film. We're going to teach for these months and we're going to go produce a movie. We're going to go to a festival. And for for my part of it, I feel like my job on either a film set or in the pool is very much similar. It's acknowledging people's wants, needs, fears, and teaching them or on a film set, just helping everyone move through it in a really peaceful way. So I wrote A Mermaid's Guide because I had spent 13 years teaching swimming and I just saw so many things that parents and other swim teachers and just these norms, because I trained with the Red Cross and just like the normal kind of program, I saw a way to improve upon so many of the techniques and to really dive into not only the physical aspects of learning to swim, but also the mental and spiritual aspects. I mean, that's really where A Mermaid's Guide translates. It's, it's the subtitle is Empower Your Child in Water and in Life. Hmm. So it's about taking this opportunity that your child has to learn how to overcome something that is life or death. And it's really the first time in their life that they're coming up against something that's life or death that they can learn to overcome. Well, what I like about this is it's a different approach. It's really a very relaxed approach that basically you can take through your life with you. How to have a life lesson, a life skill that frankly will save your life, but go through it in a very peaceful way and that mm -hmm. you're learning something and you take that skill with you. I think I told you that I have three boys yeah. and it was one of the first things I ever wanted them to do was learn to swim. And he was a lovely teacher, but he would literally get them and throw them in the pool. And they were panicked. Now they learned to swim and it was fine, but mm -hmm. as a mom, I'm thinking, mm, is this right? Yeah. And I don't quite remember how I learned to swim. I was so young. I don't think it was quite that way, but um, to this day they talk about it. They're like, why did you let us do that? Why did you let somebody throw us in the water? And I think it traumatized them a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if it's not, they call it the no nonsense mm. kind of method. Uh, sink or sink swim, or swim, survival, you know, yeah. this, yeah, this kind of idea. And for me, you miss all the beauty in teaching a child how to overcome something or acknowledging the fact that something's new and hard and here's how we move move past that. And I spend a lot of time in my lessons like teaching them just how to calm themselves. Like if you keep trying, you'll succeed. Like say for instance, we're gonna go up to the wall and the first time they're nervous about it because it's it's up to the wall. So I right, say, you have to reach up you have to and reach. that's scary. It's, it's yeah. big to a child I and mean, yeah. it seems easy to us. So we'll break it up. And the first time I say, you don't have to do it. You just have to try. And we're going to try three times. And you'll be right there with and them. And I, I keep you safe. I'm here to keep you safe. And they try the first time. Maybe they don't get it. They try the second time. Maybe they don't get it. But by the third time they get it, that's amazing. And then yeah. we talk about, hey, it's okay. If you don't do it, it's okay. But you have to try. And if you keep trying, you'll succeed. And that lesson will follow through in every aspect of life if we can take the time to acknowledge those kind of tools that we're giving them instead of just like throwing them in and not utilizing this huge opportunity to teach them how to overcome obstacles. So basically when they're very young, what you want to do is just get them pool safe. That if they fall in, they're in the deep end, they can find their way over to the edge of the pool and hang on. Yes. That's so, number one, right? Yeah. So a mermaid's guide breaks up swimming into three phases. The first phase is the phase that's so often skipped and it's developing a trust-based relationship with the water. So this is where I'm like different, different than most teachers is I spend time teaching them how to hold their breath instead of blowing bubbles. So I like that because, let's, come on. That's how you float. You're going to float because you have air. If you're you like a puffer your fish. Bubble, you're like a puffer fish. Yes, it's called puffer fish. Perfect. I know. I love it. So puffer fish, and now you're going to float in the water. Once a child understands how to hold their breath hmm. and that if they hold their breath, the water will hold them up, 
now they can relax and let the water float them. Now, phase two is just kicking and pushing your arms. Right, so, so that you can get your head out of the water and breathe when you need to. Yeah, the third phase is breathing. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you jump to the third, but that's exactly right. Yeah. So once you can kick and move through the water, now you can pop up for breaths. But because swimming is a counterintuitive problem, like skidding on a patch of ice, right? Like if you're going to skid on a patch of ice, if you, if you do what your body wants to do, you're going to keep going. You have to turn into it. So it's a counter. I'm from Wisconsin. So that's that's my analogy. You're like, right. That's a great a analogy. I'm thinking she's right about that. Yeah, counterintuitive problem. Counter you have to practice hmm. to get it right. So my dad would take me out and we do figure eights, you know, in the parking lot. So you don't panic and do the wrong thing. It's the same with swimming. You have to know how to calm your body down and do the opposite. If you fell into the water and you didn't know how to swim, your natural reaction is to panic and scream and blow bubbles and kick. And you need to do the opposite. You need to know how to take a nice relaxation, a nice float, and then push the water out of your way. Look where you're going and push the water out of your way, slow and gentle. And to your point, that's where it falls into line with my company, Relaxation-Based Lifestyle. It's all about doing hard things in a way that's peaceful. So, Like what else? Like running a movie set. That is chaos to the max, or could be, uh, especially in, in the world. So what do you world. do? In the indie world, when all chaos is breaking out, that happens all the time. Yeah. How do you, what do you do? I think... You get such a, a gift as a producer to be able to steer that ship however you want. And a lot of it starts with you and the directors. And if you can guide it in a way where everyone feels safe, like I've got their back, you're in a safe spot. We want great work, but you're in a safe spot. And if you can guide everyone in a peaceful way and maintain your cool and calm and composure through really hard things and just look for ways to solve problems. Really, that's what I'm doing a lot of the times is something will come up stuff winds blowing too much we can't shoot there how do we solve that and instead of panicking which you're going to sink if you panic in the water and you're going to sink if you panic on set you have to just relax and float into it and be able to have a perspective about the whole process and then move through it michelle were you always like this or you developed this later in a little years? later a little later i how? spent a lot of time struggling unnecessarily through life hmm. uh you know especially i have, I have two kids so four and six now but when they were toddlers two kids under two is I would always say with two kids under two someone's always crying and it's usually me like I really it's so hard I had two under two also uh, and then I added a third oh I mean that's probably so, next level and it was <laughs> it was you know I yeah. almost was able to do the two I thought yeah it's not so bad I can yeah. handle it the third came and I'm not sure I've ever recovered yet because yeah. I just ran out of hands is what it was and you're totally outnumbered and yeah. especially with two under two you're breastfeeding and the other one needs you and you I felt really torn I'm a perfectionist I did too. So, no I know I did yeah, too it was, I get it it was hard so I struggled with that and in the film industry too because I was an actor and it's I done great awesome roles I played Linda Lee in this Bruce Lee's television series and it was great but it's also a, an industry where it's really easy to fall into this I'm not getting the roles I want someone but you know it's easy to churn and sink so with what did you do what did you do to change your mindset it just came from writing this book really? and thinking about swimming not only in the pool because in the pool I am cool calm as a cucumber you cannot well you're in control you're in control but you're not in control you're like the least in control because you don't know what that child's gonna do mm -hmm. are they gonna scream and it's the I, I teach a lot of celebrities it's the highest stakes you can possibly imagine but I was able to practice extreme calm like true calmness because if you're faking it the kids feel it well i'd love to they see you feel teach. your energy i really would because i i can imagine i'm feeling that from mm -hmm. you and i can imagine the child feels yeah. that love and security and then therefore the parent i mean you, you have yes. taught some a-list celebrity kids i mean can we mention some sure. of them go yeah. ahead yeah so i i'm very grateful to simon cowell for um putting an endorsement on the book i taught his little one, and he is a fantastic swimmer, Kim Kardashian West, Sarah Michelle Geller, lots of others, and um, I'm grateful for all their support to help spread the word about a better way to teach your child about the water, or a new way to teach your child about the water. Uh, yeah, and to carry that lesson through life. Now, we talked a little bit about you can start early at home, and let's talk about that, about in the bathtub. Yes, so people sometimes think that water education starts at a swim class, but water education should start in the home hmm. long before swimming lessons begin, in the bathtub. One in 10 drownings happen in the bathtub. People don't know that, and drowning as a whole is- How could, really? One in 10 in the bathtub with mom and dad there? Well, that's where it gets a little dodgy. Like people will leave for a second. You have multiple kids, you go to answer the door. Well, I you get should that, never I'm not gonna leave. judge, you never know. You should never leave your child in a bathtub alone, but 
sadly, the, the stats are pretty scary. Just in drowning in general, it's the number one cause of accidental death for kids ages one to four over car accidents. So that's, that's another incredible. reason I wrote the book. It's like we, we have read plenty of books on sleep training, potty training, eating, but there wasn't a go-to book that I could find that gave a really good base for how to teach your child about the water. And it really should start at home in the bathtub. And I will say, if you have a little one and you just want to teach them some basics, the biggest thing is just to get them familiar with water going over their face. So, so what do you do? Maybe with a sponge or a washcloth? Yeah, a little. Familiar? You can start with a little washcloth, a little water, and teach them that it's okay to get water in your eyes. It's okay. Water goes in your eyes. It goes out of your eyes. You can see under the water. It's like a superpower to empower them. <laughs> And not always shield them from everything. You know what? You're suddenly bringing me back to being a little, little kid in the bathtub. Do you want to hear something funny? Yeah. I swear to God, I just had this memory. My sister was much older than me. Sometimes she would give me a bath. And she would, you know, drain the water. And she pulled the drain out. I was very little. I was always afraid that I was going to go down the drain. This just, just it's yeah. a memory I don't think I've had in like 30 years. Yeah, so yeah. A lot of kids that have that. Same Do in the shower. Really? Yeah, they're scared they're going to go down the drain. Oh, that was so funny. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, I haven't thought of that since I was a little kid. So, so you're, funny. I'm like really like visualizing being in a bathtub and a child. And then all of a sudden there I was going down the drain. So yeah, that's scary. And, and sometimes the water, if we shield them enough from it, they're going to build up a fear, especially <laughs> as they get older. So if we teach them, you know, the little hats that p parents have to keep the water off of their face, I would recommend not using them. Really? We, it's fine if you're shampooing. You don't want to shampoo mm. in the eyes. That's going to hurt. But teach them every bath. Just say, we're going to do three gentle pours of water over your face. So they learn from a very young age. And you start to, to like it, maybe, breath. because it's very it's very soothing. Yeah. Like, even if you close your eyes a little and you just feel the water trickle down your face. Yeah, it yeah, should be. That's pretty neat. And it, it sh should be. I mean, learning to swim really can and should be the most empowering experience. It's like flying. It's amazing. And kids love it once you break it down in a really simple what way. What age should they start in the pool, in your opinion, if they could? If they could. For sure before the age of four, because by the time your child's four, you, their brain is 80% formed. Is and there ever too young of a time? Like, I started at two. I was so petrified with pools all over the place in Southern yes. California. I was like, this is what you're going to learn. Yes, you know? if you live in a place where you're at high risk, if you have a yeah. pool, if you're around pools, California especially, most of my students are between two and three. And that's a great wow. age to start yeah. if you can. And if you have great lessons. and. Even if parents don't want to teach their children themselves, I mean, you can certainly read a mermaid's guide and teach your child yourself. But even if you don't want to, by reading the book, there's an audible too, by listening to the book. I love that. But no, this is a great book to read. It's very easy. Very easy to Simple. read. But you'll get this idea about the water. And mm. just knowing about how the water works, you'll feel more calm. Mm -hmm. And then your child will feel more calm. Do you ever get the parents in the water with the kids or no? Yeah, it's sometimes. You. You yeah, do. I do. I really like to do educational classes mm. where, especially for young babies from 10 months to 15 months, because the progress is very slow and you have to get them at a time when they're in a good mood. And I, I go off of their energy at that age. And because they're so young, they don't have self-regulation skills yet. I do it often with the parents and I say, here are the five things that you need to, you can work on. And then when they're a little older, I'll come back and do the lessons. What are the five things that they should work on? So the first one is that. The trickle. The trickle. Okay. Or teaching them puffer fish. So big breath, <gasps> puffer fish like that. So okay. hold your breath. I don't teach bubbles. Now, you can show them bubbles just to show them that they have breath. <sighs> okay, now you have breath. Right, but now you like them to breath. fill up so they can. Their body's like a balloon. Yeah. Yeah. So Makes big so breath. So much sense. Big oh breath. My gosh. And then the other ones are moonwalking on the steps. So walking back and forth, babies can do it. You can hold their hand. Moonwalking on the steps, we do gentle glides back and forth, gentle submersion, and chugga chugga choo choo on the wall. Those are kind of the basics. Hmm. Interesting. You have something about um, uh, swimming in circles. It helps you to relax. Yeah, Talk swimming in circles. That. So they've done a lot of studies. This is where um, the company that I, I run in the pool specifically was called Swim Yogi for a long time about meditation and using the water almost in a meditative flow. So they link a lot of studies to your breath and your body. Hmm. And if you can breathe nice and calmly, then your body's going to relax down. So swim circles are great. You just have your child put their hands on yours. All they're doing is going under the water. And then when they need a breath, they just look up. They lift <sighs> up. Right. I see. <sighs> Now they're doing meditative breathing and I walk in a circle. And it just is such a, it, it does a couple things. It relaxes them, but it also works on phase three breaths. And I do it at the beginning of class. So when we get to breaths, they know how to pop up, back under the water, 
back under the water and it becomes a natural progression. So you teach with your husband. Isn't that how you met him? Yes, we got set up on a blind date by uh, Judy. We love Judy. I was actually training women at Curves, um, that, that gym for women. When I first moved to LA, I went to school at Northwestern in Chicago, moved out here. That must have been fun coming out here. And it's like, wow. Yeah. It's amazing weather. So, yeah. okay, so you were teaching at the gym. So I was teaching at the gym. And this uh, Judy came in. And my husband, my now husband, was teaching her grandson how to swim. And mm -hmm. she's like, I've got the guy for you. <laughs> That's a, So what did you do? You just like showed up at swim lessons? Like, yeah, I'm like, hey. No, he uh, he, oh, he that's really asked funny. me to dinner. She swapped our our info and. What is and, it about these swim teachers? I had the, other than the one who threw them in the water. Yeah. Once they were a little older, they had another swim teacher. Oh my goodness, very handsome guy mm, who job. happens to be a friend of the family now. Like we really oh, became. He, he was very gentle. Yeah. Super gentle. That actually made all the difference because you yeah. want to respond to that, you know. Yeah, it's you know I think we often have I see parents who have sympathy for the kids learning to swim. They feel bad for them. And I would encourage you to have empathy, switch it from mm. sympathy to empathy, understanding that it's hard or new or scary. But it's a great thing that they're but doing. But it's great. You should be excited for them. Yeah. I know? was because I was so excited that every little, I don't know, it's not really a step, but every little like movement that they made and they learned yeah. to breathe. I was so excited because I actually felt a sense of relief. It was like, yes. you know, I, I, I really, really did. So um, tell us a little bit more of, I don't know, what else you do. I mean, you, I don't know how you manage this. So you do swim lessons in the summer years. Mm -hmm. And basically, they're pretty much private, right? You go to someone's home. Yeah, so I travel. Some clients will have me come out. I just got back from the south of France. I was there with one family, and they just have me come out when they're vacationing, and I stay That's nice. at somewhere near. Yeah, and I'll teach their child whenever their child would like to do a swim class. In the class. south of France? Yes. That's lovely. It was lovely. Oh, my goodness. Did your husband go with you? Or? <laughs> no, I left uh, I left him at home. That's really how I wrote the book is I traveled to New York, the Hamptons, London, and I would write the book in between. That's how, how did I your had name time. get out to be such an A-list swim teacher? Through I mean, word of mouth. On. Word of mouth. It's all word of mouth. So just I've never done advertising. It's just like a speakeasy. So one person will tell one mommy. He'll tell another mommy. He'll tell daddy. He'll tell a nanny. A nanny will tell another nanny who tells another nanny. And it just goes like that. Wow. And yeah. then next thing you know, you're talking to Kim Kardashian West, to teaching her kid. You're over in the Hamptons. You're in France. It's like, wow, what a life. Yeah, it's really been, especially um, – the travel in a way that after having babies, I, I sort of asked the universe. I was like, I really would love some some time to write and some mm -hmm. time to get some of the creative projects out there, and then it gifted me with all of a sudden I had the first opportunity for travel, and I, you know, had a lot of time on the flights and in hotel rooms to write and get some creativity out. Mm, wonderful. So um, what are you working on next with your husband? I know that you're working on a film. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. Yeah, so we've. Done quite a few films, but the first Many. one's Lost on Purpose with Jane Kaczmarek, C. Thomas Howell. Um, Strangely in Love is My Baby I Star in with Amanda Plummer. And then my husband oh. directed one called Waffle Street with Danny Glover and James Lafferty. And then we just the most I looked that up. That's recent, pretty it's, yeah. Yeah, it's like a nice um it's a nice, fun, heartwarming family one. And then Small Town Crime with John Hawks, Octavia Spencer Octavia Spencer. Anthony Anderson, that's our most recent. So we have one coming up. We're going to knock wood. I'm not going to say too much about it, but hopefully we're shooting in January, and it's a bigger one. Where will so, it be? Where will you be shooting? Can you tell us like, a little bit about it? Yes, so it's called Fat Man. I love the name. No, no, it's not Batman. It's Fat Man. Yes, and I can only announce this because it's already been in the trades, so yeah. I'm just quoting what the trades have put out, but it's about a little kid who – gets a lump of coal in his stocking and hires a hitman to kill Santa Claus. <laughs> that is so funny. That so my husband's got funny. a dark a dark streak to him. <laughs> that is one of the funniest things. I mean, yeah. I, I've never really thought about that. You get a lump of coal and you think, I got to do better. But this, this kid yeah. is thinking... I'm going after Santa Claus. So that totally. is the funniest thing. Not that he has to change. No, it's like the world's going to get him. He's going to go fix the problem outside himself. What a great himself. concept. Can I ask who's in it? I love it. Um, I can't sure? say yet. I can't sure. say yet because we're still negotiating. I don't want to like say something too soon, but no, hopefully but we'll have another like a really announcement fun soon. Film. I love it. And then in the summer, you're going to be back with your A-list parents. To, I tell you, it's a job that keeps giving because yeah. you always have little kids coming into the world and always mm -hmm. have little kids who need to learn how to swim. Yes, it's and it's, it changes a lot. I think it's probably the only thing that I could teach as much as I have. Um, I've done well over 10,000 swimming lessons, like well over that. Oh. And, and it changes every lesson. Every lesson's different. Every child's different. Every experience different. And in the same way of like 
why I love acting is just that connection you get. I get it when I'm teaching too, because you're so locked into that child. You're feeling what they're feeling. It's almost like you're you're very you're intuitive. And just sitting next to you, you've got great intuition, and you're just such a positive vibe. So I'm sure these kids pick up on it. Honestly, oh thank That's you. That's really amazing. I'm, I'm feeling it. Just like we're close here, and I just feel it coming from you. It's great. So oh, thank you. Um, a mermaid's guide, and I love this. Empower your child in water and in life and I love how you connected it so and if you read this book it's a very easy read you guys you can even pick it up and just kind of go jump around mm -hmm. from chapter to chapter which I often do when I read books yeah because if there's something I'm really interested in I want to learn I would pick it up because um, if somehow you end up deciding to teach on your own or you have another teacher you know this is a good guide for you to to use it yeah really you'll be is. able to tell what school because I get a lot of questions from oh. people out of state like can you watch this video of the school and tell me if it looks like something in line with what you teach and I can usually tell right away and you'll get some knowledge in there about what to look for in schools because really the cliff note version is the first thing your child needs to learn is how to hold their breath so if they're doing lesson after lesson and laughter lesson on kickboards on floaties and they're never going under the water and learning how to hold their breath that's you're a spend sign. a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot and they're of they're not going to be so safe no, and they're not learning how yeah. to swim. You can't swim if you don't put your face in the water. Yeah. And that's really where I encourage parents to get their kids to even do a lot of these skills in the bathtub. There's a chapter on bathtub exercises, and then you can read the chapter on phase one, which you can do in the bathtub. So you can save a lot of time and money. Again, you put your face down. Yep. Big hold breath. Your breath. <gasps> Eyes open, face in the water. Easy enough, people. It Super really is. Simple. I mean, if you could just manage that. Yes. And then you go to the next step. And yes. and I would just like to say, please, as soon as you can, get your kids into the water mm -hmm. so that they're comfortable and that their lives are safe. Because as you said, it's the number one cause of, of death. Of accidental death. Of accidental yeah. death in those young ages, right? From one to four. Over... Over car accidents. Well, it breaks my it breaks just, my heart when I hear stories like that. It's just heartbreaking because we all know that it was avoidable. If I, I just one quick story before we go. Mm -hmm. My sister and I once were, were on the steps of a pool. You yeah. know, you're just sitting there, and we had our two little babies with us. Um, you know, little. And as we're talking like this, the babies went down, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh my god. I mean, they were fine. Yeah, but yeah, my yeah. point is, it can happen anywhere. You could be right there holding your kid, and you're yeah. immersed in your conversation about whatever, and down they go. And we thought. Oh, my goodness. And they were below the water. 88% Again. of drownings happen with someone watching the children. And I'm pretty, really, like, really intense about swimming because I yeah. was also a competitive swimmer. I taught swimming. I was a lifeguard. So I didn't have your approach, so, but a little bit, somewhere in the middle. I was not tough with kids because I never thought that worked. Well, if you were a swimmer, I bet through doing it enough, you had that relaxation. And that's just, oh, it was everything you know, to me. It was a very peaceful to. place to go. You know, right. you put me on in the water or on skates on top of the water. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful place you to go. You have to. If you're going to, I have adults come to me and they're like, oh, I'm a horrible swimmer. I'm like, I, you're not, first of all. You can do it. Everyone can do it. They just need that relaxation and a trust with the water. And yeah. depending on how they learn to swim, most of what I see is they're not taking a big breath, holding their breath. Mm. And if they get it up their nose, they're. They try and blow bubbles instead of humming. That, that is a very uncomfortable feeling when you mm -hmm. get it up your nose. Even as an adult, if yeah. somehow you jump in and it goes up there, it's like, whoa. So just hum. Hum if you get it up your nose. What do you do? Hum. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I'm just like blowing it out myself. Uh -huh. So you just hum it out. Hum it out. How nice. Hum you under just the hum water. It out. Hum it out. And then it'll keep the water from going up there. Mm. Easy. And it's, it's a slower leak than a big mouth bubble. So you can still float and still relax. What about those adults? And I only have a minute or two. What do you say to them? I told you my husband cannot swim, and I'm trying to teach him to swim, and he's, he's flailing because he gets mm -hmm. nervous. What, how do you deal with that? That's really difficult. I just, they grew up petrified of the water. Yeah. A lot of adults will come to me and say, oh, I'm going to look silly doing this, or I can't do this mm -hmm. here, whatever. And I just say, look, just stink at it for a while. Just go across the pool. Nobody's watching. Super slow, as slow as you can, and mm -hmm. just focus on pushing the water behind you. And most of the time with freestyle, they do it flat, but you got to turn your shoulders. So I'll just say rotate your shoulders and go as slow as you can and relax. And then they do it and they're like, they go faster than when they were panic swimming across. Yeah. And then they're shocked. And I'm like, well, there. There you go. Done. Easy.
What a wonderful approach. I'm so glad I got to talk to you. A mermaid's guide. I'm so sorry I called it a mermaid's tale. It was like top of my mind. It's all right. It's common. So, so I'm it, glad we addressed it. Now am, they'll remember. You should have just said, no, wrong name. So thank you for being so giving there. A mermaid's guide. Now, how can people get in touch with you? So you can go to my personal site at the Michelle Lang, or you can do relaxation-based lifestyle, both. You can get the book on Amazon. It's also at Barnes & Noble. And uh, yeah, stay in touch. We have a couple more books coming out this year, really? which is exciting. Tell us a little more. So the next one coming out is called Where the Sanity Ends. It's a In my life? Are you you following me around? Right. It's a parody of Shel Silverstein's Where the Sidewalk Ends because I love him. Don't you? Love, love, love. Oh, I can't wait to read this. So it it just is all the poems that I wrote when both my kids were toddlers to help me not have a nervous breakdown. (laughs) So it's like a lot of funny stuff about, you know, a mom loving the child's painting if only it wasn't on the wall. You know, so it like is a bunch I of love like really that. funny poems supposed to help parents feel better about themselves and not so alone in the process. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I love that. Thank Why you. Why do we stress so much about that stuff? It's like, because I, I know I did. Yeah. I think it's like because as adults, we sort of need a little bit of order. Mm-hmm. But it's almost just the opposite. When you're a little kid, there's nothing more fun than painting on the walls. It's 100%. hysterical. We- and then mom gets upset and then it's even better. So, yeah, they um, just, they're, 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 and I, I think parents, we, for me anyway, I'm a, I really like order and perfection and I've kind of had to let that go and just do like I do in my swim lessons. I don't judge the mm-hmm. behavior. I try and channel it in a way in the same way that the book teaches you just to be open to whatever your child's feeling. If they're crying, great. That doesn't have any effect on how you feel on the inside. If they're yeah. not crying, great. And you just kind of guide them through it. Yeah. Lesson learned. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. I look forward Thanks for to having that book. me. A Mermaid's Guide. Please, everybody, pick it up. You can pretty much order it, right? Uh, yes, Amazon. Amazon. Or... And the Audible, too, is great. So if you're driving around and you need Actually, a good Actually, great idea because your kid can hear it, right? They absorb yeah. that stuff, two, yeah, three, 100%. four years old. So mm-hmm. please pick it up. Mermaid's Guide. And you know how to get in touch with Michelle. Thanks for being here. Of course. Appreciate Thanks it for very me. much. Please contact her. And um, we will see you next time. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and then, of course, the iHeartRadio app, um, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, Honest to God, wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find us here at Deborah Cobalt Live. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.